Welcome back, everybody. We're moving on to the next chapter, and a concept that's going to come up in this chapter fairly often is the concept of the net present value. So in this video, I'm going to explain what exactly it is. And at the beginning of the course, we mentioned that the goal of management is to maximize the shareholder value, to maximize the value for its owners. So how does management do that? How do they ensure that taking on projects will maximize the shareholder value, the owners of the company. So let's illustrate this with a simple example. So let's say someone has asked you to manage their money for them and you run into a potential project that you feel will create value for them. So you can buy a house for 100,000 and then you could spend 30,000 on labor and materials to fix it up. And then after you fix it up, you estimate that you can sell it for 150,000. So if we list out all the cash flows in this scenario, 100,000, we're going to have to spend on the house. So that's going to be a negative cash flow. Then 30,000, we have to spend on labor and materials. That's another negative cash flow. And then when we sell the house for 150,000, we're going to get that money at the end. So if you net all these cash flows out, you would get a positive $20,000 cash flow. So that represents value that you have created. So even though we created this $20,000 worth of value, there are some potential issues that can come up in this project. Number one, are these predictions accurate? So for example, this $30,000 on labor and materials, are we gonna spend 30,000 on that or are we gonna to have to spend potentially more? Are we being conservative with our estimate? Same thing for selling the house, 150,000. Are we actually gonna be able to sell it for 150 or maybe will we sell it for more? Should we be more conservative in predicting that value too? Also, second issue is when will we sell the house? Because if we buy a house today for 100000 and then within this next year we spend 30000 but we sell the house in 10 years, well, if we take into account the time value of money, that might not be as good of a return versus if we sold the house in a year. So when the cash flows are occurring is another issue that we have to take into account when we're looking at projects. So now let's look at a more specific project, a project that has more complex parameters attached to it. So let's say a machine costs $60,000 that we can buy today and it will generate $12,000 per year for five years. And then it can be sold for $20,000 at the end of five years the discount rate is 8%. So as a manager for a company, how would we evaluate this kind of project here? Well, let's start off by showing what's going on in a timeline. So the machine is going to cost us $60,000 today, which I put here 60K for short form. And then we're going to generate, or this machine is going to generate $12,000 per year for the next five years. And then it's going to be sold for 20,000 at the end of five years. So notice how this here is a negative cash flow because we have to spend money to buy the machine and then machine is going to be generating us these cash flows so they are positive and then when we sell the machine we're also going to be getting that money back so that's a positive cash flow as well. So for now let's ignore what the machine costs us and let's just figure out what's the value of the machine to us and the value of anything in finance as we've been seeing in the previous chapter is always the present value of all of the future cash flows. Well, same thing applies here. The value of this machine to us is going to be basically the present value of all of the cash flows that it generates. So if we go ahead and discount all those cash flows at that discount rate of 8%, notice how this $12,000 here for five years, that's an annuity. So we can just present value that annuity, which I did with the present value of annuity formula. 12,000 is the payment, 8% is the interest, and then it's for five years. And then we also have to present value that $20,000 single cash flow in the future back five years to times zero as well, which I did here. Now all of this you can also do with your calculator. So you can input PMT to be 12,000. The future value uh, would be the single $20,000. The N would be five, there are five periods and then the IY would be eight, and then when you compute the PV, you would get $61,524.
So that's how much the machine is worth to us today. If we take all of the cash flows that it's going to generate and then present value them to time zero. So the value of the machine to us is 61524 but to get that value, we have to pay $60,000. That's going to be the cost. So the value that we get minus how much we have to pay for it gives us a net of positive $1,524. And that amount there represents our net present value or our NPV. So if we take this example and generalize it, make a general formula for the NPV, basically the net present value is going to equal the present value of all the positive future cash flows of a project minus the present value of all of the negative cash flows of a future project. And then the net of all those cash flows in time zero is going to give you the net present value. And then once you calculate the MPV, it's going to fall into one of three different situations. So either the MPV is going to be positive, greater than zero. And if it is greater than zero, that means that we are getting more value than it's costing us. Or the present value of the cash flows is greater than the present value of the negative cash flows. So we would then accept that project. We want to take on projects that create value. And in a company's perspective, management wants to take on projects that create value for shareholders. Now, if MPV is equal to zero, then we are indifferent about taking on the project. So we're neutral. We're in between accepting it and rejecting it. We don't really have an opinion on it because the value that we'd be getting would be the same as the cost. And then finally, if MPV is less than zero, that means that we are paying for more value than we are getting, meaning that the present value of the negative cash flows is going to be greater than the present value of the positive cash flows. We don't want that. We don't want uh, projects that are going to destroy value for us. So we would reject projects with a negative NPV. Now, a couple of things I want to mention before finishing off this video. Number one, you can get this NPV number from this specific example using a financial calculator. I'm not going to go over the specifics on how to do it because there's different financial calculators out there. But in general, what you want to do is you want to input the cash flows into your calculator like this. So the cash flow in time zero would be negative 60,000. The cash flow in time one, two, three, and four would be 12,000. And then notice in time five how we would have to add those up. So 12,000 plus 20,000 would give us 32,000, a positive cash flow in time five. And then when we input that discount rate of 8%, you would compute the MPV and you would get 1,524. So before you move on, make sure that you're able to get this MPV value of 1,524 with this example using your calculator. Don't move on before you're able to do so. So you may have to go online and see the specifics on how to input these cash flows to calculate the MPV for your specific calculator. But make sure you do so. Make sure you're getting this number and you're comfortable with getting this number before moving on. Another thing I want to mention is sometimes calculators will allow you to input a frequency if the same cash flow is happening. So for example, notice how this $12,000 is happening from time one to time four. So usually what you can do if that happens, if the same cash flow happens, is you can input that first cash flow of 12000 and then there should be a button that allows you to put the frequency. Usually the frequency is just one because it will just happen one time, but in this case it's happening four times. So if you put the frequency as four, the calculator will take into account that that $12,000 is happening for the next four periods. And then the next cash flow would still be that 32,000. Discount rate is 8% and you should get that same MPV. Another thing I want to mention is that the MPV sometimes, the formula in certain textbooks will be given like this. It'll be given as the negative investment cash flow, which in this case is the 60,000 plus the present value of all the future cash flows. 
because usually what's going to happen is you're going to have to spend money in time zero and then hopefully you'll be getting positive cash flows in the future. So that's sort of what this general formula assumes. However, I don't like to use this formula. I like to use the formula that I introduced previously, which is the present value of the positive cash flows minus the present value of the negative cash flows, because it's very possible that you might have some negative cash flows in the future as well. So let's say that this machine will maybe require a lot of maintenance in the future to keep it running. Well, in some year, you may have a negative cash flow and you're going to have to present value that. So it, this formula it doesn't really take it into account. This positive here can sometimes throw people off. So I like to use the other formula, but just a heads up that a lot of textbooks, um, they might give this formula. It's just that this formula assumes you have a negative cash flow at the beginning, and then in the future, it's going to have net positive cash flows that you're going to discount. Now, the MPV, when you're evaluating projects, is always the golden rule. It's always the rule that you want to use, if possible, when you're evaluating projects, whether to accept them or to reject them. However, the problem with the MPV is that it can be very time-consuming and expensive to implement. Predicting these cash flows for a certain project, predicting the timing of them, can be time-consuming and expensive. Also predicting what this discount rate, usually this discount rate is going to be given to you in this chapter, but in the future there's actually a whole chapter dedicated to figuring out what this discount rate is going to be. So that takes time as well. So the MPV is always the best rule, it always gives you the most accurate uh, assessment of a project, but it can be time consuming, it can be expensive to implement. So in the next few videos, what we're going to do is we're going to go over some alternatives to the MPV that are maybe a little bit easier to implement, but they also come with their own flaws. Yo, what's up, guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also, check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.